Hi, I'm Crimson Overlord, and uh, in honor of Tabletop Day, um, I'm going to be, since my regular gaming group doesn't get together until Sundays, and I won't be able to play anything with them until tomorrow, I thought I would go ahead and play a, well, it's not meant to be a solo adventure, but I thought I'd play an adventure for D&D uh, rather solo. So, it's a level zero adventure for level zero characters, and uh, it's meant to, I don't know, force your players to think more as a team rather than a bunch of people who happen to come together. So we'll see how I do. I'm probably going to die. But I decided that because because of the way uh, level zero characters works, I just got a digital character sheet here. I'm not going to ever use this character again. Uh, it's one of those ones you can type in and fill out. So. I decided, I went ahead and built him already so you guys don't have to watch all that. So he's, uh, his name is Garrett, he's a halfling, and uh, using the level zero rules in Dragon Magazine, or was it Dungeon Ma Dragon Magazine, it's the one that had the rules in it. Um, I made him a level zero character, so he's got you know fairly even stats across the board. Uh, he's fairly easy to hit, unfortunately. And, uh, but he's got a uh, nice, I chose the primal power. He's got one at will power that is a, uh, a primal, uh, I believe it's an area attack. I will actually check just to make sure. It is, no, it's, it's one creature. Um, so it's, it's one guy, but that's no big deal. Because they don't really throw, I think, I think in the adventure I'm doing, the most enemies they throw at you is like three. Um, except for level 1 enemies at you and you're level 0 they don't want to kill you. Or maybe they do. Um, so he's a uh, halfling paladin, not paladin, where is he paladin from? Anyway, he's a halfling primal character, so he's got his one at will primal and he's got a javelin. Um, I have a feeling I won't actually be using the javelin because it does the same damage as my primal power. But uh, I can throw it if I need to. And uh, he's got pretty good hit points. I gave him Constitution as his highest skill, since I'm going to be playing by myself. And uh, I chose, you know, you, you start the game, you get your clothes and the backpack, but you get a belt and a weapon and one extra piece of, one extra item, adventuring gear, another weapon, whatever. So I chose a sun rod because it was within the price range and I figured it'd be useful. And I've got the belt if I need to tie anybody's hands or something, so I didn't really need rope that much. And uh, of course, being a halfling, I also get uh, one encounter power called Second Chance, which is will hopefully be helpful. Um, and the only other thing that is important to know about level zero characters is that instead of experience points, you get experience tokens. Um, and they're, they're kind of like luck points or hero points, depending on various systems. And I'm sorry, I'm taking the screen. <laughs> but so you get one at the start of the adventure, and you get more as the ever, uh, one more after every encounter. So you've got the, these points that you can use to, I can use to modify my at will power, which will, uh, of, allow me to do things like heal my party members or deal extra damage or things like that. So that'll be nice. Um, uh, but that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to jump straight in the adventure. I skimmed it but I haven't really read through it so I don't know most of the stuff that's coming. Um, I need to increase the size of this. All right, so we're gonna start right off the bit, uh, right off the bat. Anyway, all right. So uh, the backstory behind this is I'm an orphan, and this a retired adventurer found me, and uh, he brought me under his care, and he taught me some things, and he's secretly been. Uh, 
training me to take on this quest that I didn't know anything about. So, that's nice. But, eh, I'm off, I'm off the streets for the most part. Alright, um, life is boring at the orphanage in the old lighthouse outside the city walls. You've long abandoned the hope of ever finding a family. And they supposed to be and have banded together to form friends. I don't have any friends. So I just have no hope. It's nice to know. To while away the time, you sneak out whenever you can to pull harmless stunts and small cons on the citizens of Corum's Cove. Good at cons. However, this last trick you tried to pull at the Drowned Fish Tavern Drowned Fish didn't work out as planned. Your marks were not inebriated merchants, but rather a group of seasoned adventurers. Now you're scrambling into the streets of the city, with six drunk, very angry individuals chasing you. I'm gonna imagine it's my former party from another campaign. Because that would make it funny. At least to me. Alright. So, this first encounter, and I didn't even... Hmm. You know what? Let's do... I apologize. I didn't get out dice, because I'm stupid. So I'm going to use virtual dice. I have no idea who Ron is. The guy who made it, I suppose. Alright, so this first thing is going to be a skill challenge. There's also the digital thing, it talks to you, so you guys can know what I roll without me having to actually like say it out loud, and you can believe me. Alright. Angry shouts rise behind you as you scramble into the busy seaside streets of Corum's Cove. It's time to lose your pursuers and get back home. Alright, so this is a skill challenge, which I didn't used to like, but I'm getting a little... liking them a little more now. Um, and I can only have so many successes with each skill. Uh, so I'm gonna go with... I'm gonna try stealth. Um, I got a plus one on my stealth. Yay. Uh, but I can have up to three successes, and because I'm alone, the DC is reduced. So we're gonna try for stealth. See if I can hit a 12. All right. So I'm hiding from my pursuers as they chase me down the streets. I slip down an alley, duck behind a dumpster as they run past. I carefully peek my head out, and slip across the streets. One of them thinks they hear me, so they turn around and continue on. Um, and I don't really have any good strengths, but I'm running, I'm trying to get home as fast as possible. So I'm going to go with an athletics check this time. And I can have up to two successes on that. And I, I need six. That's my goal. So uh, we're going to go with a little athletics. And I did not outrun them. Um, I suppose I should note that I am 16 years old, and I'm being chased by a seasoned group of adventurers. So it's very understandable that they caught up to me. So they caught up to me, they managed to grab a hold of my arm and wrench it backwards, and you know, it sprains my shoulder as I manage to kick my way out from under them, and use my smallness of, a, of being a halfling to duck underneath his feet and kind of double back on the group. And then, um, hmm, I'm just going to go with another athletics. Uh, that was only my first failure. This challenge is set up that uh, for my first two failures, if I pass the very next test, I can erase that first or second failure. But only for the first two failures, which is good for me because I need six successes. Oops. 17. All right. So definitely my my tactic of ducking behind them and doubling back on them surprised them enough for me to get a head start. So now they're chasing me and they they can't keep up. 
as I kind of, you know, duck under carts and things like that, but they have to go around. Uh, and then I'm gonna th I'm gonna I'm gonna go for an acrobatics. So I'll give me a plus one on my acrobatics. And it didn't even need it. I'm apparently fairly ac acrobatic here. Oh no, I get a plus three because I'm a halfling. I forgot about that. I didn't roll a twenty on acrobatics. All right, so. Uh, So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fake, I'm gonna fake myself being tired. I'm gonna, you know, as they, they start to get a little over eager and uh, not paying attention to the surroundings because now they're focusing on me as I get a little tired or as I appear to get a little tired. And uh, I'm gonna vault over, I'm just gonna vault up on top of a merchant stall and, and climb up on a windowsill and dash through this, through this poor person's house. And, uh, then I'm gonna need I'm gonna need an acrobatics to get back. All right, so I managed to make my acrobatics check again, uh, which is the most I can do with acrobatics. So I managed to, to tumble out the window and uh, grab onto you know the windowsill as I fall, so I don't take I don't take any damage. I don't hurt myself. And I continue I continue just dashing down the streets with another athletics. So. Alright, that's my second failure. Um, and I need six successes before three failures. And I am currently at... What am I at? Uh, three successes. And my second failure. So, uh, I'm going to attempt to pass the next one. I'm going to take something that... Uh, oh, I can't take another ac acrobatics, though. That's the only thing I get a plus... I think that's the only thing I get a... Plus two, two. Um, let's check here for the other the other stats real quick. See what else I can do. I uh, nope, I cannot do fail uh, thievery. That's the other thing I get bonuses to. Um, okay, so I could go perception. Uh, what do I get? A plus two on perception. You know, I'm gonna use a perception check to see if I can spot an alleyway uh, as my pursuers catch up to me and, and you know get in a couple good hits as I'm as I'm you know trying to dodge between their legs. They've surrounded me now, and I I really need to get out of there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try a perception check. All right, so I made my perception check. I find me an alley. And I managed to. Uh, so I see that alley, and I, I need to get to that alley. So now I'm going to make another athletics check to just kind of power through uh, between these guys and get down that alley as fast as possible. And uh, by passing the perception, I now can roll again if I happen to fail this next one. It won't count. Um, all right, see, so I failed again. I'm not very athletic, apparently, but I'm going to re-roll. All right, so I managed to make my athletics test, and uh, so I managed to get out from beneath the or get through, you know, power through these 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 adventurers. You know, run right past the orc and the tiefling, and make my way into this alley uh, before they can get any more hits on me. Uh, now I'm hurting, I'm bruised, I'm starting to pant. Um, and I've got four successes and two failures. I didn't really use the whole re-roll or, you know, get rid of failures thing. Uh, I don't know. It didn't fit with my role-playing, so. Um, uh, so, Streetwise... Street, so Streetwise is a wisdom, right? Uh, or charisma, sorry. Um, I think Streetwise is my best bet. Streetwise, unless I can make a nature check, but I can't. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna go with streetwise. I'm gonna see, see. Uh, I'm gonna use my streetwise to see if I can get some of the townspeople to kind of run interference for me as I as I run on. To try to try to lose my pursuers here. And apparently nobody nobody gives a crap. <laughs> I've just, uh, you know, I've just 
lost, you know, ran into somebody I knew, and I'm like, you gotta help me, these guys are chasing me, and they, they just kind of shoved me back in the adventures, said, you know, you've been conning people too much, so, uh, definitely caught now, they've got a good grip on me, uh, I failed three times, the skill challenge is, is kaput, <laughs> um, so the skill challenges, you know, the skill challenges. <laughs> the adventurers roughed me up a little bit more, and they demand their money back. So you know, I, I didn't, I didn't get any money out of that. And that was a kind of a rather eventful yet unproductive day. Uh, but you know what? I, I managed to, to to keep a keep a small gem that I conned off of one of them without without them noticing right away. Um, it's been about an hour since I left the bar, or you know, the tavern, and uh, I'm just having, you know, it, it took me a while that I, to, I just kind of limped home, tail between my legs, I could I had to take some time to kind of brush myself off, and hopefully my uh, adopted, you know, my, my adopted father, I guess would be the foster father, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> My foster father, I don't want him to know uh, what happened. Um, shortly after you return from the city, you hear the summoning bell in your chambers, calling you to Denek's office. Denek is my foster dad. Uh, Denek is a gentle soul who's dedicated his whole life to the service of Avandra, goddess of luck and adventures. She didn't help me too much today. Maybe I should start worshipping her. He usually finds your stories and excuses amusing, but you expect to be disciplined for the last escapade. Yeah, it didn't go so well. As you climb the stairs of the old lighthouse and enter your caretaker's office at the top, you can't help but think about how old and tired the half-elf priest has looked these last few weeks. A worried smile spreads on his face as he beckons you in. It's time we talk, my young, impetuous one. You are ready for the task. So, uh, Janek, uh, I'm going to actually skip most of this stuff. He's fairly old. And he actually said he's beardless, white-haired, and grandfatherly. Alright. So, Janek apologizes to me, and, uh, you know, at first, you know, why are you sorry, but then he kind of explains you know, I when I found you, I didn't adopt you out of kindness. I adopted you because you had potential. I saw your uh, rapport with nature, and I thought that you might be able to someday, with some great training, be able to uh, go on this quest and help me out. I, I kind of raised you to be a tool. So, you know, yeah, you better apologize. Uh, but, you know, I have great potential, that's nice to know, and uh, he's not mad that I got the crap kicked out of me for trying to steal from adventures. Uh, so he's just been grooming me this whole time, uh, because he really needs someone to do this quest. So, he's gonna ask about me. Um... Uh, Oh, yeah. So now, he's got a little backstory. Many years ago, before I became an adventurer, I was captured by pirates. When their ship was wrecked on an island during a storm, I escaped along with a few others, and we discovered an ancient temple of Avantra that was being desecrated by warring orcs and goblins. A few days later, the island was destroyed as we rode away. In the following years, I became a cleric of my beloved goddess, but never again did I sense that intensity she showed on that island. It's as if part of her essence was lost along with the island. Well, I found that essence, trapped in another world, and that's what I ask you to do. Bring her back. I'm rescuing a god? I'm pretty sure there are better people who are better suited to this. Do this for me, and I'll give you everything you need to become a great adventurer that I know you can be. 
Shouldn't I become the great adventurer before I rescue a god? Um. Um. Let me, uh, I'm gonna roll a diplomacy check to, uh, you know, is there anything else I should know? What kind of, you know, where am I going to, to find this? Seven. Okay. The neck apparently doesn't care where this is found. Um. Now, I don't really get to know, uh, he doesn't tell me why he wants, uh, you know, why he chose now to go on this quest or anything like that. I, I won't know that kind of stuff. Um, but he does tell me that he, he knows how to open a portal, which will take me very near where she is. Which happens to be in a fairly stable pocket of the elemental chaos. I don't know about you, but the elemental chaos is ripe with danger. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I'll be right back. So the the elemental chaos is is rather rather dangerous and something that seasoned adventurers kind of try to avoid when they can. So it's probably not the best place. It's probably not the best place to uh, be sending a, an untrained adventurer. Um, uh, he does explain. Uh, beyond the fact that he's now too old to go on this adventure that he planned for for half his life. Uh, he does explain the reason he doesn't want to hire seasoned adventurers is because he thinks a young adventurer filled with potential and passion is more likely to make an impression with the aspect of Alondra um, than a, like, a battle-hardened, you know, stoic adventurer. Which is... I mean, it kind of makes sense, but I would think a stoic adventurer should come with me so that I can, you know, survive. But I suppose at the same time, even though it's in the elemental chaos, the temple itself is probably supposed to be pretty safe. I mean, I've been playing D&D long enough to know that nothing is safe, but I'm sure my benefactor believes it to be safe. And uh, when I when I return, if I'm successful in my journey, he's going to uh, give me. Uh, he's not going to give me. Anything. He's going to pay me enough, or not pay me. He's going to pay my trainer. He's going to pay for me to basically learn how to be a, a, a druid or a warden or whatever, whatever primal class I would go with. Um, which is nice because I, I don't even know what kind of primal class I would go with. Um, uh, and he's going to leave the portal open so I can always come back if I feel it's too much the next morning uh, as I, after I'm done getting ready and getting all my supplies and, you know, putting my sun rod in my backpack and whatnot, the next summons me to his office again. A glowing gray portal stands in the corner of the next office. Your old caretaker stands near it, chanting words in a guttural language while holding a dusty book of rituals. Sitting between you and the portal is a low table on which rest several glowing silver finger bands. After a few seconds, the next stops chanting and sits down, exhausted. In a reedy voice, he whispers, I did what I could. This portal will stay open for one full day and night. Please put on one of these rings, enter the portal, and get the goddess back for me. Uh, the silver bands are linked to the ritual to allow me into the portal, uh, passage through the portal both directions. Uh, and it only lasts as long as the portal does, obviously. But, you know, that's nice. I can come back whenever now. And nobody else can enter the portal, so no, nothing from the elemental chaos will come attack him. No random adventurer will just bust in and, and come through the portal. Um, you know, unless, of course, they figure out what the ring's for. 
Um, but that ends officially the the it, that's technically two encounters, but uh, I'm classifying both meetings with the neck as one encounter, uh, as well as the one before that. So I have a mark on my little character sheet here. I have three experience tokens that I can use, which is nice. Um, So I'm gonna I'm gonna thank him for taking care of me and uh, ask him, you know, to to keep the place uh, in good condition till I come back. And I'm I'm going to hope that it doesn't take me more than two day or more than a day that I've got 24 hours for this portal. You know, if I don't if I don't come back because I can't make it after the portal time or whatever, you know, I, I don't know build a monument to me, because eh, you wouldn't have to build a big monument, I am a halfway. <laughs> um, take care of my pet slug, there you go, I've got a pet slug, take care of my pet slug if I don't come back. Uh, so I'm going to step into the portal, um, you're violently thrown into the stony ground of what appears to be an island floating in a storm. Cold winds and rain whip around you, and flashes of lightning and peals of thunder explode all over the gray skies. When you get up, you notice a large ruined temple taking up half the surface area of the island. In the distance, you also make out the remnants of a beach sailing ship. A few tents are set near it, and a group of miserable-looking humanoids are huddled together around a smoldering pit. Through the wind and thunder, you hear occasional hints of other sounds. One seems like uncontrollable, high-pitched weeping. Another is a deep, resonating voice, barking orders. Um, let's let's make the perception check because there is one. I'm probably not going to make it, but let's go for it. Yeah, this is the one downside to this uh, on uh, this computerized dice roller is 7, 17, and 15 are the three most common rolls, uh, which is a little, little, I mean, it's it's balanced in my favor, I suppose, but it's it's a little different than a normal die, uh, which is going to roll, like, between 13 and 18, uh, not, yeah, between, sorry, between 11 and, and 17 is the, the average that I roll normally. Um, so I don't actually know the bark. The, the voice barking orders, I don't actually know what it's saying. Um, and of course I don't... I don't speak goblin, so I wouldn't understand most of it anyway. Um, uh, oops, I tried to turn the page, but there, okay. Alright, so let's look at this map. Let's look, you know, where am I starting here? Um, Alright, so I start here. There's the portal. Alright, so and I'll I'll maybe splice in the map so you guys can see. I start at one. Uh, so there's a little orange dot, that's the portal. Um, at least I'm pretty sure I started one. It doesn't actually say Yeah, one. Okay. It was on another page. Alright, so I started one. There's a nice little little orange spot so I can find the portal really easily, uh, just by glancing at the map. As well as the number one, which I suppose. Um, so, directly in front of me appears to be some sort of uh, overgrown grass, whatnot. It appears to maybe the ta that the temple has kind of crumbled directly in front of me. Um, off to my left, uh, there's an encampment of some sort. Somebody's has been shipwrecked on this island. They were probably uh, sailing the elemental sea, trying to get somewhere. Uh, I, you know, I know a little bit about the elemental sea. Uh, it was in my studies, obviously. The neck would have taught me about it as I was growing up, because he would have been schooling me. So this would have definitely been something that he found important. So he would have, he would have told me a little bit about it, at least enough to where I could survive in this place. So I know. If I fall off the island, that uh, I'm probably going to fall forever, or die of electrocution or something. I, don't, you know, because there's a whole storm going on around it. Uh, the shipwreck off to my left. 
it's a little it's a curious who else is in the element storm but i'm not a fighter like you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm okay at, at conning some some you know merchants in a tavern but i don't think i'm not confident in my abilities to take on any number of people in a fight especially after those adventures they just pounded the crap out of me so I'm, i think i'm gonna try and avoid that so um using a little bit of player knowledge of this map i, I know i can't really go right very far um uh, and so I'm, I'm going to, based on the picture, I'm going to assume that I probably doesn't look like I could go very far. Um, and I'm sure there's a back door back there, but this, I want to inspect this, this area right in front of me. Um, so I want to look at four. I'm going to skip the four here. Okay, so um Okay, so it says I can try and climb on the tower, uh, but it doesn't really say what this stuff is in front of me, leading up from the path. Let me check two, uh, I'll just skip over two real quick, I want to see if this shows me anything. Features of the area, let's see, campfire rack, uh, three is the overgrown, let me check, maybe there's, where is three, just, okay, the overgrown garden there, that's probably got the info I'm looking for, um, like I said, I didn't really read this adventure, so, uh, I'm gonna kind of go around here, So, the area that I want to go to uh, doesn't seem to have, it doesn't really explain uh, on the map, and I'll, I'll like circle it in the video or something, but it, it doesn't tell me what that is, is that, if that's just dirt or whatever. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what that is. So, in lieu of that, because I, I can't find any adjudication of what it's supposed to be, or description of what it's supposed to be, um, I'm going to try and be stealthy and go along that that area which i'll just assume is a wall uh perhaps that's inside so it's crumbled but i, I can't i have to climb over the wall or something like that um i don't know i kind of maybe i'll go in that i'm gonna just attempt to climb over that uh and and just get down on uh no, uh, because climbing doesn't seem like my strong suit either. So I'm gonna be stealthy. I'm gonna try and go towards what I could see is some trees because I'm I'm really good. I'm, I'm primal. I've got a lot of rapport with nature and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try and be sneaky towards three, and uh, I'm just gonna look to see. I'm just gonna check real quick to see if these uh, the residents of the ship will know me. Uh, it's very dim light, which is good. It helps my stealth up. Um. Let's see here.
So there, I'm gonna say because the thing says that the these inhabitants are uh, like bickering and, and discussing plans. So I'm gonna use a passive perception of eleven, and I'm gonna try and beat that on a stealth because they don't really give me any uh, really interesting, or they don't really give me any, you know sense that these guys are looking. So let's see my stealth check. I get a plus one. Wow. I, yes, there's the storm, the lightning, and the thunder. I, I very easily sneak past these guys uh, to what is called the overgrown gun, uh, garden. Um, so there are, there are several, so there's a couple like pools of water, it's crystal clear, um, and it's, it, it, it's, like trickling, water is trickling out of the temple into these pools, the base of cracks and things like that. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to make a Arcana check. Uh, no, you know what? Because my character wouldn't, he wouldn't. You know, I don't want a meta game, so I, I wouldn't. You know, it's water, it's flowing out, so I probably should. You know, check the cracks to make sure that like the temple's not full of water at some point. But I think for now, I'm just gonna explore uh, these trees. I'm gonna sneakily go through, and uh, I see uh, I see this 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 goblin. She's leaning against a tree, her eyes are closed, her breathing is labored, she doesn't look very in good shape. Um, and uh, did not expect to see goblins in here, especially considering, uh, you know, the goblins don't travel the elemental chaos all that much to my knowledge. So there's gotta be some, they must have come here for a reason. Um, she, she, she definitely doesn't look very healthy. I don't think she's going to attack me. Um, but I, I, I don't know if I want to disturb her. I don't want her to like yell. I mean, her, her companions obviously left her here to die. Um, I mean, it might have been her choice. She might have been too proud. She might have been like, you know, I'm gonna die anyway, go on, you leave me here. Um, that's, that's possible. Uh, but I really don't, I don't know if I should mess with her. Uh, I kind of want to observe her for a minute, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of watch her, uh, watch her breathing. It's very shallow. She just definitely doesn't look good. Um, But I I don't know. I, I feel I, she doesn't really do anything. But I just I don't want her to reveal my position to the others. And I I know she's hurt, and I I kind of feel for her. Like I I wouldn't want you know someone. Like, I don't want to leave her there. It's a, it's a tough choice, because, I mean, you know, I, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rule that my guy is, he's looking out for himself. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to fight. If she's a goblin, there's a bunch of goblins over, you know, with the shipwreck, and, and I don't think I can handle more than one or two if I'm lucky. So we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip her. Uh, so this forest leads into a hallway. Yes, yes. There's like a broken spot in the wall. I'm gonna creep past her. She's not gonna notice me because she's dying. Um, I'm gonna creep past her into this hallway. I'm gonna look around. Uh, there's there appears to be some rubble. Maybe another part of the roof caved in off to my left from where I came in. Uh, and there's a door off to the right, a set of double doors. Um, not sure 
Oh, and there's also a door on the wall directly in front of me. Um, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be going, what I'm supposed to be looking for. Just that I'm supposed to be rescuing this aspect of this goddess of Pandra. So it's, it's, I don't know, questionable what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I don't want to just go straight, I mean, to just start blundering blindly. I need to be smart about this. I now know there's goblins about, um, although they do seem to be out all at the camp, uh, I, there's no way for me to know that. There could be stragglers inside. Uh, the camp could just be the ones who are too scared to go in. I, I have no way of knowing, based on the size of the ship, there probably were more at one point. But if the one in the garden is any indication, several of them might have been hurt by something in the temple, which gives me more pause, you know, more reason to pause, more worry. So uh, I think what I'm going to do, since there are two double doors, and I'm fairly confident that I'll hear if they open. So I wanna, I'm gonna creep past them, um, and I know for a fact based on when I skimmed it that one of these rooms uh, doesn't have anybody making perception checks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through and uh, I'm gonna just creep past this door. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna make myself a roll stealth check, and uh, I'm gonna. Try and go over this rubble. Now I am going to make myself a little stealth check over the rubble because it's going to make a lot of noise. Alright, so that's a, that's a 16 stealth. Uh, like I said, passive perception, nobody's expecting me to be there, so none of the goblins would have would have heard me. I'm, I'm fairly stealthy uh, over this pile of rubble. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to look... Alright, I see... you know... There's another hallway, there's some stairs, there's a door. There seems to be a room that's open right in front of me. Now, let's see what I can see. I'm going to try and see through the doorway from where I'm at. Um, let's find the right room. Okay. That was almost on the wrong So, it appears to be a kitchen. Uh, and from what I can see, there's you know I've got a, a barrel lying there, lying on the floor, and there's some cupboards and possibly a a pot or something like that. Um, but I can't really see into the kitchen. I can't see if there's any people in there, um, any goblins in there, I should say. And uh, I can't see if. Uh, I can't really see. It kind of looks like it's been looted, or ransacked, uh, or just maybe been used. Maybe somebody's been here for since it got sucked into the chaos. I'm gonna roll perception check. See if I can see. See if I can hear anybody. <laughs> That's awesome. I've never rolled a nat twenty on the thing, so I know everything. All right. So um. So I'm definitely there's. I know, like, as the DM, that there's no, that there's nothing in the kitchen, there's no people in the kitchen, but with a natural 20, I can now, uh, as a player, allow myself to check the other hallway and uh, the, the stairs, just to see if there's any kind of noises coming from them. So, we're gonna, I'm just gonna check right here. Uh, Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything there. Uh, let's check the next one. Okay. Upper level, that's what I wanted to see. I just wanted to see if there was anybody, you know, that might come down the stairs. So I'm looking for room 17. Uh... So, yep, okay. So, 
so I'm definitely, uh, I don't hear anything. There's no, there's definitely no people on this side that I have to worry about immediately. There might be some upstairs, but they're not making noise. There might be some in a room who are sleeping or something, but they're not making any noise, so I'm fairly confident that at least this side is, uh, clear enough that I don't have to worry too much about it. Um, and I went to the wrong map. Smart me. Because I wanted to look down on this. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do from here, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to hope those... I'm going to hope those that... I'm going to hope that the fact that I don't hear anybody means that the goblins are not in this part of the temple. And... Uh, I'm gonna go for the big door like right in the middle because that seems from a logical standpoint uh, to be a door that's going to lead either like to a meeting area or a, like a, a there should be a, maybe a statue in the temple um, based on my knowledge of temples that I learned from my master that you know if it doesn't lead to a meeting area it'll lead downstairs or something like that uh, and I, I kind of want to check it out you know, I want to do this as quick as possible, so I'm, I'm hoping that there's something there. Um, okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna crack open the door. Still trying to be stealthy, but uh, anything in this room is gonna know that I'm coming. I just kind of try and keep everything else uh, from noticing me or from hearing me. Uh, light enters this immense hall through openings in the roof, the remnants of which are supported by five pillars. A sixth pillar has collapsed and now lies broken across the tiled floor. A tall female figure stands opposite you at the top of a broad staircase, glowing with a blinding white light. I cover my eyes, you know, kind of blink as I try to look in there. She cries and curses, rages and bemoans, seemingly in an ongoing state of distress. Tears fall down her face, collecting in a pool at her feet that flows down the marble stairs and puddles near a partly collapsed wall. So that's, I would assume, where the water was coming from that was leaking outside, uh, which means it's probably magical. So that there may be some sort of benefit to, to touching that water. Uh, or throwing it on somebody. Maybe it's holy water because it came from a goddess. Um, not that I've encountered any reason to use holy water. <laughs> Goblins aren't really evil, so to speak. Um, above this wall is what remains of a ten foot high wooden balcony. Its railings shattered or rotting in places. So if I'd gone upstairs, I would be able to see down into this room. In the middle of the room, four human skeletons and a pair of goblin cadavers engage in a gruesome dance, a slow choreographed battle that seems to have no end. So, there were humans here. They died so long ago that there's nothing but skeletons left. And some fresh goblin corpses. And they seem to be fighting each other. Neither of them seems to be win neither side seems to be winning, but they seem to be fighting each other, and no side seems to be overpowering the other. Um, so, I can safely assume that this, uh, aspect of Avandra is what reanimated them. Uh, not sure why, but I can safely assume that that's why she, or that that's how, what happened. Um, as for why they're fighting each other, I don't, I don't know if that's something she's doing, or if she just reanimated the bodies and somehow some form of sentience allows the humans and the goblins to see each other as enemies. I'm not, I'm not really sure about that. Um, um, but uh, I do notice that they're not actually they don't seem to be trying to kill each other or anything like that. They're just, I don't know, pretending to fight. Maybe they're putting on a play. 
Maybe they're not undead. Maybe they're just corpses that she's finger puppeting. Um, so I see this, you know, I, I see this, this, this woman, and I, I have to assume that this has got to be the aspect of Monica. She's glowing, there's, you know, corpses moving around around her. She's got to be some sort of highly magical character. If she's not the aspect, she's some sort of witch trapping the aspect here. So I'm probably going to have to deal with her at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to... I'm gonna I'm gonna walk towards her, uh, but not not close enough that she could touch me. I'm just gonna take a few steps forward, her, and uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, ma'am. Uh, is everything all right? Uh, how do you as how do you aspect of an ask of how do you what the word? Words hard. Um, how do you address an aspect of a goddess? Um, the goddess's head snaps up, looks in your general direction, and addresses you. What's this? More defilers? Won't you ever learn to let me breathe in peace? Um, and oh yeah, the 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 corpses are attacking me. That's good to know. So the corpses, they they stop their a cabaret dance and turn to me and with their, their weapons ready and they start advancing on me uh, and uh, let's see okay so Okay, so I need to go to the next page to, to, to deal with this woman. She's rather pretty, isn't she? Uh, Alright, well, I'm not close enough to touch her. Uh, she's freaking out, obviously. So, uh, it says she can be talked to. So let me, let me try, uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run initiative in a simplified order, me and then the monsters. Um, in fact, I'm actually gonna be, because there are six monsters, I'm gonna do me and then three monsters and then me and then three more monsters to make, to make myself survivable. Otherwise they'd probably destroy me in one round. So I want to give myself a, a fighting chance this way. Um, Alright, so see the section. So I'm going to use my first turn. Um, I'm going to use my free action to talk to her, and then I'm going to I'm going to have to take on these these things if it if it doesn't work. Uh, wait, what? This says after her rage is ocelage. Oh, okay. So, you know, please, I'm not here to hurt you. I, I I'm here to save you. And uh, apparently, she uh, mumbles something incoherent, and uh, is going, and I'm I'm gonna have to deal with her. I'm gonna have to deal with this fight before I, I can actually speak to her meaningfully. So, you know, I'm going to use my free action, I'm going to speak and, and, you know, try to convince her, but she's going to have none of that. Alright, so, okay. Okay. So, two powers. Okay, so I can fire in the ult. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look at the map again, sorry. I probably should have had this map prepared ahead of time, but oh well. So the altar is... Okay, I see the altar from the door. So I'm kind of standing in a puddle of water. That could be good, that could be bad. These undead seem to be under her control, so holy water might not work on them. Um, 
basically, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna judge that the, the 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 undead are down on the level with me, and she's up by the altar. Um, so we're gonna. We're gonna look here, and uh, I'm gonna say, all right. So I'm going to judge. You know, theater's mine. I'm gonna judge the undead. Uh, most of the undead are with, within ten feet of me, uh, based on the, the size of the room and where I would be standing, uh, because I did approach her. So uh, the altar is where I would need to go to deal with her power. So I'm gonna have to just go straight for an undead. So I'm gonna go for a department scout. I'm gonna just go just I'm gonna, you know, sidestep right into the closest skeleton and I'm gonna roll an attack. Um so now I get to look at the character sheet for attacks, which is nice. Um because I don't really have the option of running away. But I do have the option of learning these things. Maybe I shouldn't. You know, she's not having anything, she's not having any of me helping her or discussing things with her. So, maybe, just maybe, I should attempt to, I don't know, uh, I'll back out the door. I can take these things one at a time as they come out. Um, I think it's better. These things are going to come at me. Um, there's no ruling that, I mean, there's nothing in the book saying that they stay in the room. So I'm going to, I'm going to prepare my javelin. Uh, you know, I've got to draw, I'm going to, I'm going to draw it. That will be my minor action, I suppose. I'm going to move. I'm going to step back out the door. Uh, I'm only like 10 feet in the room, so I'll step back out the door and I will uh, prepare myself so that I'm in a spot that, that only two or three of them can hit me at a time through this door. Unless they know how to open doors, then I'm screwed. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hope. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope against hope that uh, that they're not gonna you know what do you call it? Yep, my brain stopped. I don't know. Um, so I'm just gonna hope that there doesn't seem to be like a tactics or anything for these skeletons. Um, so, all right. So there's two zombies and three skeletons. All right. So I'm gonna back out and I'm just gonna ready in action. Um, I'm, I don't know when one when a, when a skeleton or a zombie steps in my way. I'm gonna or steps into the doorway. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna uh, jab at him with mine. Uh, I'm gonna use my power. I'm gonna stomp the earth and crack the stone, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's gonna be a skeleton. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm gonna bypass the the role playing of the the enemies shambling up. So. Uh, uh, I'm gonna throw three of the three closest ones come to me first. One steps in my line of, you know, within my attack range. And I get a plus two versus his fortitude. Alright. 19. Okay, that's a, that's a hit for fortitude. Alright, so the skeleton's gonna crumble with my stomp. Shake him apart. Using my primal power, I stomp the ground and. The reverberations rattle up the skeleton, and he crumbles in front of his other people. Um, then I'm gonna. All right. So then there's one more skeleton, two more skeletons that can reach me from where they're at. That they can kind of through the crack in the door because I'm standing like almost in the doorway. So let's have them roll their long sword attack. Um, oh, and. Skeleton to shift one square before the attack, so one of them can actually get right in the doorway where the other one died, which is very nice. All right, so he gets a... um, 
My AC is an 11. He gets a plus 6 on that. So him hitting me is kind of a guaranteed. He only has to roll a 5. That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if I had a high dexterity or high intelligence, I'd be harder to hit. Uh, more of a neat shield than anything else. Um, so he does 4 damage to me. Alright, so I'm marked down on my character sheet. I now have 16 damage. That was a loss. Uh, the second wind is going to be difficult. Oh, and so the other one's going to attack. Alright, so it's another 6 damage. Or another 4 damage. Oh, yeah, duh. I can. I can do math. So I was at 14 and just 6 more damage, so now I'm at 8. Alright, so I'm, I'm officially bloodied. Uh, I'm wishing I was a dwarf so I could second wind as a, a minor action. Um, do I have an action point? I don't think I have an action point because I'm level 0. There's nothing in the rules about it, but. I mean, I should have two if you want to go by normal rules, but I think because I'm level zero, I don't get one. So let's see. One ally of mine who is adjacent to the target. Well, I don't want to be adjacent to the target. I'm a backup. Um, these guys are no minions. I saw one fall and one hit. So I don't want to. I don't want to mobilize it. I don't want to deal extra damage. And I don't want. I don't actually want to use any of my experience tokens. None of them help in this situation. If I was a, a, I believe a divine character, I think I could heal myself. But uh, I'm gonna need a backup. So I'm going to crap. I need my standard action to heal, but they're gonna get an opportunity attack. Again, I get plus two AC versus opportunity attacks. But the way these guys are rolling, I'm gonna die from skeletons. Um, I don't know. They can move fast enough to keep up with me. They'll be one square away from me if I run. Alright, so. Alright, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift out uh, away from them, shift my, my five foot step. So, no opportunity attacks. Um, then I'm going to. I'm going to book it. I'm just going to climb up this rubble and just try and climb over this rubble. And, uh,. So I'm going to get, based on where the door is, on top of the rubble pile. Uh, and the, the skeletons should be able to get one, there, there'll be one square out of reach to hit me. Which will be nice. Um, uh, but they, oh, it's not going to work. Never mind, I'm going to get mad again. I forgot. The skeletons can shift one square before they attack, which means that they would be in reach. If they essentially have a speed of seven if they're using their, their if they're attacking. Um, and of course, I would be able to see I would be able to see that they have long or short bows on their back. Uh, so I would, I would assume that they would switch to those if it got too far away. So I don't know because because I'm by myself. I don't want to make this as enjoyable for me as possible. I'm going to I'm going to rule that I do have action points because everybody's got action. Everybody's got a relic. Everybody's got an action point. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to spend my healing surge. I'm going to use my second wind, and that's going to bring me up to 13. All right. So I'm no longer bloodied, uh, and I now have a plus two to AC. So I've got a 13 AC now. Uh, for the next round. Or is it the next attack? I don't know. It's the next round. Until my next turn. Um, then I'm going to use one of my two action points. Um, the general rule is you can only use one action point per encounter. Like that's the default rule. Um, in my games, we use one per round, maybe. Is, is the, 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 the most we limit it to. And even then, sometimes it's not. So I'm going to limit it to once per round, but I'm going to allow me to use them all in this encounter if I have to. Uh, hopefully, I won't have to. I can't really heal myself anymore. So 
I'm gonna have to just tough it out. Um, so I'm gonna use my extra point, and I'm gonna I'm gonna attack another quaking stomp. You know, stomp the ground again. Five? Are you kidding me? Even with a plus two, really? Um, and that's not gonna hit his fortitude, is it? So I blew an action point. All right, but because I ruled that they're gonna come after me three at a time, so now the other skeleton and two more guys are gonna come up, and they're gonna get behind the skeleton out of range. So the one's gonna pull out his longbow, and he's gonna he's gonna attack me. Oh my god, yes! It's a 9 versus AC. Alright, so the, the shortbow missed me, and I believe. I don't know about the goblins if they have any ranged. Uh, no. So the, the, the goblins on these do not have a range attack. So. Oh, that's good to know. Um. So, I'm good. The two zombies can't reach me, the skeleton missed, and I get another turn. And so now I need to, to I need to do what I can. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go clicking stomp again. Alright. It's an eleven plus two versus fortitude. That's a thirteen. It just barely hits the skeleton. So I'm gonna take out the skeleton. Um I kind of, I guess since I'm alone, maybe I should allow myself the leader. My leader thing is supposed to affect my allies, not me. But because I'm alone, let's assume that it affects me. Let me I give myself temporary hit points. I'm going to give myself three temporary hit points by expending an experience token. And I'm going to gonna take out that, that skeleton right in front of me. And then I'm going to try and click and stomp the one next to him, who's also within my melee range. That's the same one, same same monster, same defense. So I, I just took out two skeletons because I used my I used my last action point. Um, I you know I um you know as as I as I shake down another skeleton, I, I, I yell out to the to the aspect, please, I'm here to help. You must you must stop this. I know I'm gonna you know. Uh, Temporary hit points on stacks, so I got my three temporary hit points that I'll mark on my sheet. Uh, then I'm gonna use my move action, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get away because now now only one uh, of these enemies has a ranged weapon, which is what I'm basing this off of. Um, so, um, so we'll do that. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm out in the hallway. I'm up on the top hall level. Um, so these, the skeletons and the zombies are going to kind of crowd in the hallway. The zombies are going to shamble forward, get as close as they possibly can, and the skeleton is going to roll an attack against me. All right, natural one on the on the uh, on the the archer. These skeletons have poor aim. Apparently, which is good. It's uh, good for me, and I can deal with these zombies who have actually have hit points. Um, um, I'm tempted to cut their hit points in half or something, but you know what? I'm gonna leave them full hit points. Uh, I just need to get around them to take out the skeleton. You got the archery. And he's, he he basically stayed back there by the door and just shot it out. Getting to him would require an opportunity to attack from the other guys, and I can't really risk that. So, back down to 11 AC, which sucks. So I'm going to go after this zombie. Um, and I, I'm just going to just gonna keep stomping, because that does the most damage. That's my best attack. Um, do I do if I need to... If well, You know what, actually? What is my... You know, no, I'm going to... I'm going to move just into the effective range of the zombies and I'm gonna throw my javelin because I, I can hit the skeleton from where the javelin is um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw my javelin 
10. I don't get a bonus, so I missed the skeleton. I was kind of hoping to take him out. And this is this is gonna get a little little gruesome here. Uh, so let's have the zombie. Well, let's let's have the skeleton roll his. Skeleton hits me for three damage, so my temporary hit points are gone. So I'm still at 13. He, you know, he just it's, the arrow just grazes my shoulder as I try to to focus on these zombies now weaponless. Uh, so it's now a little harder for me to defend myself. Um, zombie grasp. So let's let's have this thing. One of them is going to try and grab me. He's going to miss the grab. That's very I'm very happy about that. Um, so let's see. I think the next one's just gonna just, just gonna attack me. He's not gonna try and grab me. Um, which gives him an eleven, which means he does hit me. Um, jeez, what? These things do an insane amount of damage. Their max damage is more than my current hit points, so I'm just gonna assume they roll half. I'm gonna assume that they just roll a six because they roll d12 for damage. That's ridiculous. I don't even know who thought that was a good idea. Alright, so I'm going to start using my experience tokens for damage on these guys. Um, so he's going to roll, so this is 9 damage to me. Um, I got only one of them hit, right? And I am now. I as DM know that there's an easy way to kill myself in this encounter, but I, as a player, as a character, have no knowledge of this. So what did I say? Nine damage. So I now have four hit points. So now I'm relying on luck to make three attacks miss me in the next turn. Um. So you know, I'm just gonna go out. And say now I'm. Probably gonna die here. My poor pet slug. His name is Rose Park. He's never gonna see me again. I'm panicking now. I'm, you know, Garrett is is freaking out. Um, wait a minute. I have second chance. Hang on a sec. So he gets to roll the attack again. I actually did better the second time. So my second chance was totally useless. All right, so yep, I'm panicking. I'm theoretically, I mean, given the backstory, I would be praying to Alondra, but she's the one trying to kill me. So this plus a few other moments in gaming have taught me that uh, don't worship gods. Gods in D and D are complete jerks. And they're gonna kill you because they don't like you. So uh I'm gonna panic. I'm just gonna lash out with my natural fury. And uh six. Are you kidding me? I just missed. <laughs> I've got nothing. I have absolutely no abilities, no powers, nothing, uh you know what? I don't have a weapon in my hand. I still got a minor action, and drawing something is a minor action. So you know what? I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out my sunrod. Sunrod. Right. This is light. This is something that would, at the very least, startle these zombies right next to me. The archer's probably not gonna even care. He's too far away for it to really affect him. But the sunrod, the way I've always imagined it is it's like a torch without the like cloth part on top uh, so it's just like a stick but it would be like metal and when i pull it out and i use a thought to activate it it sheds bright light so i'm gonna you know i'm gonna as the dm because i'm being creative give me an intimidate check to cause this next round for the two zombies to not attack me i can still die from the skeleton you know, I mean, I, I'm not out of danger, and there's no way I'm gonna 
you know, do this, but, uh, or, yeah, better yet, instead of them not attacking me at all, I'm going to rule that they just won't opportunity attack me as I move away. If I can pass an intimidate check, uh, I'll do DT12, because that's, that's an average one for this, for this adventure. Yay! Um, I had a plus two on that, because I'm charismatic. So, I pull out my sunrod. As a last ditch effort, I retrieve my sunrod from my backpack. I activate it. The light sheds. The zombies kind of stumble, uh, you know, they kind of, not stumble back, but you know, they, they flinch. Uh, which allows me the, the option to, to run away. And I'm going to run, um, I'm just going to go look at the map real quick, just to see if I can get outside. Do I think I can get outside from here? I do not think I can get outside from here. Well, actually, yes. I can get back out into the garden. Um, I'm also going to assume that these undead are not going to leave the temple. Um, I'm also going to assume that if I leave now, the skeletons are going to be re-raised while I'm gone. So this, 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 this ditch, last ditch effort to not die is, you know, this, this is all I've got, but hopefully they won't follow me out. Um, the archer might follow enough to be able to get a shot off, but hopefully they won't actually, the zombies won't leave the temple because they're, they're bound to her and she's bound to the temple or at least staying in the temple. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna rule the DM that the skeleton will follow to try and get a shot off, but nobody else is going to. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm rushing. This halfling, this little halfling, he's dressed in, in these, these plain brown clothes, he's got a sunrod in his hands, uh, the, the gob, you know, the, you know, what I assume to be goblins up at the shipwreck are gonna definitely notice this light dancing in this overgrown garden. Um, if that one goblin's still alive, she might notice it. But I don't have any option. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hope the goblins are friendly, or hope that they won't kill me on sight. You know, I'd rather be tied up than dead. So I'm gonna run out. I'm just gonna dart out this because there's a broken wall there. Just dart out and tumble into the thing. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna. The skeleton's gonna. He's gonna. You know, rush up. And he's gonna roll one more last attack on me. Alright, I have, I believe, four hit points. He does three damage. I am at one hit point. One. One. Uh, uh, so I'm stumbling out. I'm bleeding. I've got a severe uh, bite in my neck, and there's an arrow sticking out of my back. And I'm, I'm, I'm giving it everything I've got. I'm ducking behind a tree, and and trying to keep a tree between me and the crack in the wall, so or the, the tumbled wall, so that the skeleton can't get any more shots off. And uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm officially out of combat at the moment. I'm not gonna give myself an experience token for that, because I didn't really accomplish what I went set in there to do and I didn't set I didn't defeat the monsters or or deal with them uh, in any way. Well no I should I, I killed three skeletons and I managed to do something rather uh, ingenuitive. So I guess ingenious is the word, but this sounds like bragging when you say ingenious. Uh, but so you know, I will give myself an experience token. I've got three. I don't think I'm going to survive to use three in one battle, but I've got three. Um, I just won't get the experience token if I complete them later. So I'm rushing out with my sun rod, and I, you know, the, the goblins are now they're they're standing, they're they're mobilizing, and I'm I'm just screaming at the top of my lungs, "Don't shoot! Don't kill!" Um, these these goblins are they 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 know I'm there. There's no, uh, you know, as I'm running, I, I, you know, I definitely see a, a goblin. I definitely see some goblins. Uh, there's a handful of them. There's a fire pit, and 
but they're they're now they're armed. They they're they're pulling up their bows and they're they're taking aim on me, and I'm hoping that I don't get riddled with arrows as I stumble out of the forest. I'm tripping, and I I'm I'm barely able to to even walk at this point. And I'm just I'm gonna drop to my hands and knees and drop the sun rod as I, as I as I get within range to be able to hear them. Um, uh, but oddly enough, as I as I you know as I collapse near them, panting and bleeding profusely, they uh, the what appears to be their leader steps up, kind of making calming gestures. He he does he doesn't obviously want to kill me, uh, which is good. Um, so the the uh, the leader here uh, yeah, so you know he's in, in, uh, in, in uh, passable common you know he who are you why are you here you know, I tell him I was sent to try and rescue the aspect of Avanja. Oh. Um, he says, he says, the goddess in this temple, the angry goddess made of light, she kills everything. And you know, and I. I'm, I'm collapsed at this point. I'm, I've got my head lifted, and I'm, I'm attempting to converse, but I'm having trouble. I feel like passing out, and then, you know, I, I, I noticed. Can, can you help? Um, I'm gonna go with my diplomacy check. Hold a two on diplomacy, so he doesn't immediately bandage me. Uh, I'm gonna rule that uh, as the the conversation goes, he's going to signal somebody to stop my bleeding. Um. Uh, but yeah, I uh. I, you know he's. Uh, so he, you know, he's, he says, uh, you know, he, he, as he, you know, I beg him to, to save me. And I don't know, it's hard to roleplay with one person. <laughs> um, at least something like this, because it's a rather vague thing. There's no specific things that he can just go, well, here's how this works. And uh, this situation actually wasn't necessarily planned for. So he, uh, he, uh, you know, he, he sends someone over, and they're not very careful, you know. They, they, but they, they stop the bleeding, and he, you know, he, he questions me why I'm here, you know. I, you know, my, my mentor, he wants to rescue the the aspect of Vandra. You know, and he, you're crazy. Why, why would you want to rescue some? Terrible killing machine like that. And, you know, I, you know, I just that's what I was told to do. I, it, I don't know that I can, and I think I just need to go home. But uh, you know, so he questions me, how would you get home? You know, how did you get here? And I explain the portal to him, and I, uh, you know, I let him know that I can, I can return. It's, it's open for a day. I don't, I don't think. That I'm strong enough to make it through here. I don't. I don't see myself as being experienced enough. I might need to come back in the future after I gain strength. Because I. I don't want to die. I don't think. I'm gonna stay. Um, Uh, so, 
the leader who reveals his name to be Drogto. It's a weird name, but he's got one, so uh, he's he's going to uh, he's going to inform me as I as I rest. Uh, I'm going to use this this actually role playing encounter. This is my short rest, basically, which I can spend healing searches as many as I need to get up to full. So what am I? At? I'm at five, and I'm going to need four to get up to full. Um, and I'm gonna want to stay as close. I'm gonna want to stay full. Like, I don't mind wasting one hit point worth of healing surface to, to get full. So I'm gonna need to spend four. So I'm I'm now down to one for the day, and I that's it. If I go to sleep, then you know, uh, if I go to sleep, then I I'm gonna have to get up and leave if I go to sleep. I'm not gonna have time to to, to dilly dally. Um, so, you know, I'm there, I'm resting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it probably takes me, you know, I, I stay there for a good, much more than five minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna stay there for probably a good, I'll say maybe half an hour recuperating, and uh, we'll assume that when they bandaged me, they gave me some salves to kind of lessen the pain to a dull ache where my arrow wound was, uh, and they were able to retrieve the arrow, you know, pull that out. Um, the bite of my neck is probably still very, very fresh and raw, but uh, I don't have a whole lot of other options. <laughs> so I'm gonna, you know, so he's, as I'm resting for this half hour, he's going to explain that uh, he's, his group was hired by being called the Storm Prince. Uh, they found themselves in the elemental chaos by accident. Uh, well, not by accident, but they found themselves on this island crashed by accident as they went through the elemental chaos. And the Storm Prince promised to release them once once they can find uh, a magical amulet that is within this temple. And you know, the Storm Prince is invisible, so they've never seen him, they've only ever heard him. Uh, but he hears everyone in the temple. If, you, if, you know, if I've been in the temple, he knows I'm here, which means my stealth checks were useless. And of course the goblins apparently are not like, you know, trying to kill kill me, so you know, that's something at least. Um uh, so you know, he he tells me, he says, if you have a way out of here, then uh it's better that we go with you because I don't know that the Storm Prince is going to honor his deal. And I if if you can get us out of here it'd be much easier. Um, but the Storm Prince has been you know, running ragged and getting them killed, and he would like revenge. So he would like to know if I would uh, scout out the building, possibly uh, leaving, or uh, possibly staying away from where it was, but you know, going upstairs, trying to find the Storm Prince. Um, Um, so, he, uh, I don't know that I want to do that. Um, I know I can leave. I, I know that I need the ring to leave. I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure if I can take anything with me. I, I don't know, I don't, so, you know, I, I don't know. It might be my benefit to try and find this stone prince uh, without attacking him or anything like that. But, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna skip to the part about me leaving uh, to find out if I can actually, in fact, leave.
I was always right, um, looking at the upper level picture, and I, that definitely was collapsed building down there, so I could have probably just gone through there. But no big deal. Uh, the way I did it worked as well. Um, it was actually rather nice. Well, the garden was nice. What happened after the garden was not. Um, Let's see. Alright, so... Drogto is rather friendly towards me, and he's not... He's not demanding that I do anything, but he's asking me to take him with me. Uh, to in an effort to, you know, bypass the Storm King because he does not want to die, um, and I, I I sympathize with that, and uh, you know I tell him you know, uh, and during this conversation it occurs to me there is a goblin who oh, I found dying in the, in the the garden, and I ask him about her, and he says she's she's lost cause there's no way she's going to survive you know she she she's probably dead already. But, you know, I saw her a good, at this point, probably a half an hour, 45 minutes ago. He was, he would have been, he's surprised that she was even alive at that point. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him that I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about it as I talk to him. You know, as he tells me that he's surprised she's alive and whatever. Um. So I'm gonna uh, but he he did offer to share me some treasures if I could you know, he he offers to pay me. You know, I tell him I don't I don't know if I can take you back and he's like we can we can give you treasure. You know, what what we have we can we can give you a, a, a small portion of it. Um, um, so I'm going to make an Arcana check. Because that's what it says to make. And I have a plus zero for that, so uh, let's hope for something good. Okay, so I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rule that that, uh, the neck. I haven't forgot his name already. My mentor. I'm gonna rule that he explained everything about the rings, um, to me. So, if, if a goblin, if any goblin, touches me as I walk through the portal, if they're holding my hand or my belt or whatever, then they can they can step to the portal with me. Um, oops, was on the wrong document. Um, so I'm just I'm gonna go for it. You know, I your goblins. I'm I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm actually at this point. I don't even. Well, okay. I need I need some treasure. If I don't have some treasure, then I can't train. So I'm just gonna go with. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come through. Um, so I'm I'm gonna tell him. So, hey, I you want some new treasure? I I'll take one. What are there? There's seven of them in front of me. So there are seven of you. Uh, I will take one seventh of the treasure. Whatever you've got, we'll divide it up. I'll take one seventh of it. That's fair. I don't mind you. I'm not gonna try and extort you, uh, but you have to promise not to attack it being town, and you're probably gonna have to leave town as soon as you get through the portal. Um, so I'm gonna roll uh, d diplomacy to try and get this. Well, three. Okay. Now he's now he's telling me, you know. You know, if your talent is going to be dangerous, and, and you know, 
how do I know that you're even gonna let us through the portal? How do I even know that you that you even know how to take us through the portal? Um, and so I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him straight up. I I don't have anything. You healed me. Maybe you healing me is enough payment. I won't even. I, I'll, whatever you can keep your treasure. So, but if you want to go through the portal, then you come with me. But I have to. I'm going home. I'm not gonna die in this place. You know, I will come back when I am ready, when I am a strong adventurer. And so he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna come with me. Hey, there, there are those seven goblins. They're going to fail to mention or even speak to the other goblins uh, who are in the building that I, I, that I personally, as a character, don't know about. Um, and I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go through the portal, and I'm gonna let them know when we get to the portal. As long as they're touching some part of me, they can come. The seven goblins are gonna grab my arms, my my good shoulder, uh, you know, my belt, whatever they can, and I'm gonna step. We're gonna step through the portal together. Uh, when you pass through the portal, the neck is waiting for you. Hey, yeah, I was right. His reaction, no, his reaction depends on whether you request it or not. So you know, uh, you know, I tell him I, you know, he comes through. He's, he's how. How did you go? Did you survive? Or not survived. So how did you go? Did you succeed? I, I don't feel the aspect returning to Avanda. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to, as he notices the goblins in tow, I'm going to, you know, I couldn't. It, they, she, there was, she animated, there was these zombies. And I nearly died and I, I show off my wound and my other bandage, even though know, he can't see that wound. Uh, and he, you know, he's, he, he's very grim, he's very sad, uh, you know, but it, thank you for trying, and I'm, I'm glad you're safe. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he says the, the zombies, you know, it's probably their fault, and he's, he's blaming these goblins, and, but no, no, they, they, they didn't have anything to do with it. Family mentioned that the zombies were technically goblins. You know, it was all the aspect. She was terrible. She she was killing everybody. She was killing goblins. You know, that's it is just I something something is made her psychotic or something. Um, but he tells me he says I'm I'm too weak. I I, I could not go in there. I don't have the time to. To train and other people, you know, it's, this you are my own coach. I tell him, I said, I, I will make it my mission to become strong enough to go in there and save her someday. I will, I will rescue, I will rescue her from herself, and I will do it if it takes me a year, if it takes me ten years. I will make it my life's work to do what you have quest, what you have tasked me with. Um. So he, you know, he, he says thank you. He says I, I will do my best in the time I have remaining. I'm very old. I will do my best to, uh, you know, to train you more, and I will, uh, I will do what I can. Letters of recommendation, gold. I will, I will find you a trainer, someone who can teach you how to be. Uh, it's how to utilize your powers better. So you know, I'm thinking him. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna think him. Uh, you know, the goblins are I'm going to tell you, know, you. You should leave. Uh, the city may not take to you as kindly as me and my mentor have. The goblins are going to 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 be satisfied. They're going to, the nod their head, you know, uh, Draco is going to thank me, and he's going to actually offer me, he's going to offer me a gem uh, from, from his stores, and just he had it in his pocket, he's going to offer it to me, he's going to say, I know you told me I could keep the treasure, but you did help us, 
you gonna need all the money you can get for if you want to be able to survive that place. So, uh, thus concludes the first outing, uh, first true outing of Garrett the Halfling, the primal gifted. Um, it didn't go quite how I planned. Uh, I kind of expected originally for it to be a little longer. I thought it would last a little longer. I thought it would. Uh, I hope I wasn't covering that mic the whole time, that would suck. Uh, but I, you know, I thought it would last a little longer. Um, if I survived, I thought it would last a little longer. Um, it was very tense there. I, I kind of thought I was going to die. Uh, you know, my character was freaking out. He was, he was really, like, his life was flashing before his eyes. His 16 long years of halfling life last, you know, flashing before his eyes. He thought he was never going to make it home. You know, I mean, he parlayed with goblins, too, uh, who he kind of learned over the years were generally rotten scoundrels and shouldn't mess with them. Um, but he, he did it anyway because it saved him. Um, and I think the way I was playing him, he was doing a lot of stealth, and he was... Uh, trying to be kind of diplomatic and things like that and uh, I just the way I was playing him I think Druid makes the most sense if I was to if I if I ever am to level him up and make him a full full level one character I'm probably gonna go Druid because uh, Druids have uh, several animal because Druids have the the animal form I believe or versions of an animal form I'm not really sure but they're also uh, if I recall correctly they have lots of healing options um, and I was, I don't know, I was, I mean, I was healing myself as best I could, but, I don't know, maybe not. I like Druids. Druids, Druid is a cool class, so, I, I don't know. Um, possibly a, uh, what is it, a Seeker? It's like the Striker version, it's like the Striker class for Primal Power. Um, I had, I had to check, but I think Druid seems, of the prime of the, of the three Primal classes that I know, um, I, well, no, Barbarian, so, yeah, of the four Primal Classes I know, the best one fits him is Druid. Um, also, he's going to rescue a god, and he's going to be very, you know, nature-y and whatever as he goes through his career, so if I, if I decide to level him up, I'll save the character sheet. If I decide to level Garrett up, then, uh, he will, he will definitely probably be a Druid. I'm so committed. <laughs> And, uh, but that'll that'll be nice, and uh, I think that was fun. I haven't I've never done a solo adventure from a team adventure before. Um, I've done a few solo adventures. Usually they're like choose your own adventure style. They don't give you all a lot of information uh, at a time. Um, and of course the role playing is generally a lot easier because they give you all the dialogue options. Uh, but it was fun doing that, and uh, the level zero adventure was nice. Uh, I've always wanted to run a level zero adventure for level zero characters. So uh, I like that. I learned a lot from that, uh, both as a player and as a DM. I think I can utilize that in my future campaigns. Uh, I think it's good. So, you know, it was fun, and uh, I got to play a, a tabletop game on tabletop day, so, you know. That's good, uh, but I will play with my group tomorrow, uh, which will be Sunday, and then um, I think this following Tuesday from when I post this, I will probably do like a mass upload of Tabletop Tuesday stuff to kind of catch up to where we are. And then uh, I'll start posting Tabletop, my Tabletop Tuesday videos with video, um, at least during like the combat scenes or whatever. Right now I'm having an issue with battery life, but uh, for the most part I'll be able to start doing uh, the Tabletop Tuesday, we'll be able to have actual video, uh, which will be nice. So, uh, you know, see you later, and uh, I hope you enjoy.